There has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. We have not been told their condition at Dallas. In the downtown when I first heard about President Kennedy's assassination, it was in elementary school, and the teacher turned on the radio about quarter to one, and we heard uh, CBS News uh, radio speak about the president's been shot, and it's very serious. And uh, shortly thereafter, we found out the president had died. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. It made an indelible mark on me as well as many other millions of Americans in our country. The president would make a, a trip to Dallas on tw November 22nd, and they uh, had a tremendous welcome at the airport. They got, they got in the cars, and uh, the motorcade proceeded down Mockingbird Lane into Lemon Avenue and into downtown. At the corner of Houston Street, they turned north for a half a block and then made a sharp 120 degree turn right at the foot of the book depository, school book, Texas School Book Depository, and turned down to go under a tunnel of the railroad tracks in the western edge of town in Dallas, and shots rang out, and the president was dead in the next 20 seconds. I, I guess I always, I always thought there might be something more to it. So, so I always had a, a, an idea about the importance of this case would be how the trip came about. Jerry Bruno was told about the, uh, the trip on October 23rd, and he flew down a few days later. He was advancing the entire Texas trip, and uh, so his last stop was Dallas. He was met by Lyndon Johnson's top aide, Cliff Carter, uh, people from Senator Yarborough, the liberal uh, senator from Texas, his advanced people, and uh, they were trying to determine where and what exactly President Kennedy was going to do while he was in Fort Worth and Dallas. I don't believe Ke Kennedy knew anything about this. It was all up to Jerry Bruno to decide. And Jerry Bruno spoke in his book about the problems he had with Governor Conley. Governor Conley spoke to him uh, in a very demeaning manner and uh, told him words to the effect that if you don't do it my way, you can tell the president just not to come. And he wanted the luncheon to be at the, in, the trademark in Dallas, where they would loop into downtown first and then come back to the trademark for the, for the lunch. Jerry Bruno, on the other hand, wanted the women's building, which was on the east side near the fairgrounds, the state fairgrounds in Dallas. Most of the time, Nobody gets into this with the president's advance people. The president's advance people look at everything and hand out, here's the schedule. Jerry was very upset. He, he said, the only time in all the history of advance people that people weren't happy to do what I wanted them to do, weren't happy to, to be involved in the president's visit, that he actually had this, this knockdown, drag out fight with Governor Conley about where this speech would, would occur. And as I looked into it, I realized that, well, wait a minute. If they have the luncheon at the trademark, then they have this opportunity to go by the Texas School Book Depository in this very bizarre little jog through the plaza, which placed them then back on the freeway. Johnson always maintained after the assassination that he had nothing to do with the trip. He's on some of the presidential recordings, speaking to his top aides, and they're, they're actually going through line by line certain passages in the William Manchester book, which was a Kennedy family authorized biography of the assassination. And he, he would say, I didn't know, I didn't want him to come down, didn't want him to come down. And, uh, as I looked into it, 
I didn't find that. I, I found that he knew a lot about the trip. So, so the FBI had, had dug up this newspaper article from the Dallas Morning News that spoke of Lyndon Johnson speaking of a Kennedy trip to a luncheon in Dallas and a dinner in Houston and uh, spoke about it in April, April 23rd. Connolly and Johnson maintained, of course, after Kennedy was, was dead and not able to, to say anything differently, but they maintained that President Kennedy was trying to come to Dallas, wanted to come to Dallas, wanted to get some, some dinners together. Well, that's not what William Manchester said. He said Johnson wanted the dinners. That was a lure for Kennedy to come down that they would have fundraising dinners for the, the president. As it turned out, in his entire stay, and in his entire trip, they had no fundraising dinners except for the one that was scheduled for Austin the night of the president's murder. It, it really started me to dig in to, to look at how the trip really progressed and really came about. Then I was fortunate in, uh, in 1975 to uh, be reading one of the Secret Service reports by one of the Secret Service advance men, Wynn Lawson, and he mentioned uh, a man from Minnesota. And he, he mentioned Jack Pewterbaugh. He was the political advance man for the trip, something that Jerry Bruno had not mentioned in his book, nor had I been aware of, but in the Secret Service reports, which were declassified years later. How the president's motorcade landed right outside the place where the assassin worked is one of the great mysteries of this case. And it was ne really never looked into. Each person, as I found out, Jerry Bruno, Jack, Jack Pewterbaugh, Wynn Lawson, they all had their own story, but they never talked to each other about it. I think like so many of the people that were involved in this, they, they, they had their, their role or what they did, and then they just suffered for many years where they never spoke to people about it. So piecing together each one of their stories um, is, quite a, is quite an amazing story, and it's never been told. <laughs>